Welcome to Booty Whiskey Gaming, and it's that time again, time for a late review. This week, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I played it on the PlayStation 4. Now the story in this game, I'm not going to say that it's the strongest in the franchise, but I did enjoy it. Jacob and Evie Fry are twins, and they happen to be assassins as well, raised by a family of assassins. And they must stop the Templars who have taken over London. They're continuing the near future storyline with you being the nameless initiate that they began in Assassin's Creed Unity, which I enjoy because I find that near future storyline really interesting and I like to see where it's going and a lot more happens in it this time than in Unity. Now for gameplay purposes, the Fry Twins are pretty much interchangeable, but for story reasons, they are very much unique individuals. Jacob, he's the blunt instrument. He's like a hammer, essentially. You point him in the direction, you send him to destroy. And he tends not to think about the consequences, which are pretty important in this game. Not that I'm saying you have a choice to really alter any of the events through your decisions. It's not one of those games. It's just, he doesn't think about consequences. Evie, on the other hand, she's like a scalpel. She's always thinking of the consequences. She's very precise. She's sneaky. She's trying to get in there and get done what needs to get done as quietly and efficiently as possible. Admittedly, it doesn't always go that way. Jacob spends most of the story trying to destroy the Templars, basically from the ground up, starting with the little guys and working his way to the top. He also thinks, to do this, the best method would be starting a street gang called the Rooks. And it's fairly entertaining at times. Evie, she takes a very different approach. She realizes that the Templars must be in London for a reason. She realizes that is a piece of Eden. And she tries to get that piece of Eden. That's her objective. Like any Assassin's Creed game, our main characters meet some interesting characters along the way, ranging from historical figures to made-up figures. As for the sound design, it does its job, and it actually does it really well, now that I'm thinking about it, because it helps immerse you in this world. Now, obviously, I'm not a guy who's like, oh, the sound design was so glorious, and because of this, 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 and this. I just want the sound to immerse me in the world that they're trying to get me to play in, and well, they did a good job in this game. As for the voice actors, they all did a really good job, but I wouldn't say any of them stand out above the rest, but they do help you believe in these characters that these characters could have existed. Assassin's Creed Syndicate is pretty much like all the other Assassin's games in that it's a third person action game, and Syndicate really takes a lot from Unity. And anyone who played Unity might be sitting there going, oh god, oh god, no. But let me tell you that Syndicate took things from Unity and, for the most part, did a better job with them. The only thing I don't think Syndicate did better than Unity was the free-running system. For whatever reason, I felt that the one in Unity was smoother than the one in Syndicate. The free-running system does share the same basic system as well as controls as the one from Unity. It just doesn't feel as smooth. But you're not going to get stuck on top of boxes like you used to in the older Assassin's Creed games. Fortunately, however, Assassin's Creed Syndicate took the weakest part of Unity and brought it back to life. I'm obviously referring to the combat. I mean, Unity's combat was a nightmare. The character was a complete idiot, or at least it felt that way. Syndicate also uses RPG elements and, like, the gear elements that were introduced in Unity. And they're executed about the same, I would say. The one thing they have in this that they did not have in Unity is... I won't go so far as to say it's a crafting system, but you can craft specific gear and upgrades. One thing that's pretty cool about the RPG leveling up system is that Evie and Jacob, for the most part, they share... The majority of skills but they do have their own unique skills and those skills apply specifically to each of the characters evs are more stealth based unique skills and jacobs are obviously more combat oriented they also made getting around the city way easier by introducing what i like to call the gta victorian london element to the game specifically it's the fact that you can jack people's carriages and drive a carriage around london it makes it so much easier to get from wherever you are to wherever you need to be. 
So beyond those new elements, it's your pretty standard Assassin's Creed. A lot of side missions, the main missions are there as well, you don't have to touch them. The side missions range from helping people, finding crime on the street, kidnapping gang leaders, hijacking gang shipments, you get the idea. I'm not saying that's a negative, I've always loved the Assassin's Creed franchise and I love having the side missions, otherwise they'd actually be really, really short games. Graphically, Assassin's Creed Syndicate is the best looking Assassin's Creed to date. The reality of it is, it's in the details, just the small details throughout London that make it feel more realistic, as well as the small details in the character designs. I mean, down to the fact that the hair looks way better than it has in the past, and it even, like, the mustaches move. I'm not joking. It's just details like that help breathe extra life into the world that they're trying to build. As for other complaints, I would say I ran into a few small graphical glitches, but nothing that made me go, what the fuck just happened? And then I also had a few issues triggering some of the side missions the first try. I would just leave the area, come back, and it would work. Minor complaint. Minor. Overall, I ran into nothing that ruined this game, and I really enjoyed it. As a lover of the franchise, it is definitely worth buying, and honestly, if you're not a fan, this isn't a bad place to jump in. So in the comments below, why don't you tell me what your favorite Assassin's Creed time period that they've used is. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. And if you like what I'm doing in general, subscribe. Have a good one.